we can go to YouTube and, and uh, catch it there later. Uh, maintain um, relationships with each other and calling on people and praying for your uh, care group people. Um, this time has shown to us and proven to us just how important relationships are. And so we want to continue to, to uh, encourage you to connect with your peer groups and, and be in touch and, and uh, share your concerns and needs with each other and pray for each other. Uh, prayer meeting, uh, Wednesday, 6 p.m. on Zoom. Uh, that link is in Facebook and in email. So uh, Wednesday, 6 p.m., we have our uh, Zoom prayer meeting. Uh, that's been working uh, pretty well, and uh, it's a good opportunity to just lift up our uh, needs and, and uh, meet each other and uh, pray together. Uh, Awana, we are continuing to post some Awana lessons. We are nearing the end of our Fruits of the Spirit videos, and I've got an idea cooked up for kind of uh, to launch us into the uh, summer type of Awana. It won't be Awana, but it'll be... Uh, other things that we're going to be posting in that on that page for children. So uh, check it out uh, on Sunday afternoons. Uh, the posts will be there and uh, enjoy those little videos. Youth group Friday nights at 6 p.m. Uh, on Zoom. The link is also on the Facebook page and Reach Revolution Youth. So uh, go to that specific Facebook page, the Revol Reach Revolution Youth, for meeting Fridays at 6 p.m. Uh, ties and offerings, uh, mail, mail them if you can't be here, uh, to P.O. Box 2, Jonesport. Um, we won't be passing the plates in person for a while. The offering plates are in the back, so if you're uh, here today and you want to leave your offering, uh, you can do that by just uh, putting the, the plate on the way out. And also, if you would, um, if you're watching from home, would you put a comment with the number of people that are watching with you at home so that we can get um, kind of accurate attendance numbers and we know who's, uh, who's out there watching and, and with us. So that is it for announcements. I want to enter um, into our time of worship. We have a call to worship this morning that can be found in the uh, verses of Isaiah chapter 12 in verses 4 through 6. Give praise to the Lord, proclaim his name. Make known among the nation what he has done. And proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing to the Lord, for he has done glorious <coughs> things. Let this be known to all the world. Shout aloud and sing for joy, for great is the Holy One. Let's pray together. Lord God, um, we thank you that we are able to slowly come back and meet together in your house. <coughs> but Lord, we also know that uh, we have many more meeting with us uh, from their own houses. And, and we are so thankful for the technologies that you've made available that we can do that. And so Lord, as we even come today, uh, remembering that we celebrate Pentecost. <coughs> and the coming of the Holy Spirit and the, the early forming of the church. So we pray today that uh, the Holy Spirit would rain down in this place. Uh, let our souls drink your goodness. Let our hearts overflow. Holy Spirit, rain down in this place. Amen. Amen. Well, it's kind of nice. I don't have to sing to myself. <coughs> <laughs> For those of you who are here, the words will be up on the screen. For those of you at home, we're going to sing the heart of worship and, oh Lord, you're beautiful, and you can look up the lyrics for those and join us. But we're going to worship the Lord together. Why don't you stand? Wow, I'm not standing. Why don't you stand? <laughs> Thank you. 
Yeah, he, he's doing better. So he's doing well. Uh, but we want to continue to pray for uh, Norma Beal and Jeffrey Alley. We've been praying for them lately. Um, who else have we been praying for? I just blanked out. Nate, Brad, Brad yep. Um, I think Nate's still doing well. I haven't really heard an update on him. Brad is recovering from his surgery. Uh, that's Sandy's uh, nephew. And he was battling some pneumonia before. Um, we need to pray for things going on around our country, definitely. Both with the, the virus pandemic and also with some of the tensions and, and things going on out uh, in Minnesota. Is that right? It's spread. It's spread. Even if I have a man. Yeah. So we need to pray for those things. Are there other prayer requests this morning? Trish. Trish, right. Trish was diagnosed with cancer, and has she heard anything yet? She got her first treatment. They didn't figure she would have any positive results for three weeks, but within three days, she said she knew that she was feeling better. Okay. So she has six treatments, but I don't remember the span of time in between. Okay. We'll pray for Trish. Anything else? Yes, yeah. Um, Eddie Love passed away for the Wednesday, I think. And uh, so we'll be praying for his family. Uh, that'll be a brother to Bill. And uh, so, yes, remember them. Anything else this morning? I've unspoken. Okay. Anybody else have an unspoken? Okay. You can raise your hand at home. We'll play, pray for that too. Pastor Nick's going to pray for us in a minute, but we're going to say a prayer for us. Lord, you are more precious than silver. Isn't he the most precious thing we have? Physical pain that needs your healing. 
We thank you for the progress that Tim is making and continue to uh, work in his uh, rehabilitation process, Lord. Uh, we think of uh, Trish and this uh, diagnosis with cancer, Lord, that you would be with her. Uh, just give her strength and, and a healing that she would see miraculous results from these procedures. Continue to lift up uh, Brad and uh, the healing through the surgery and the pneumonia and uh, just the struggles there, Lord, uh, be with him. Lord, we think of uh, the Look family today that uh, are suffering and grieving the loss of a loved one. Uh, it, and it's especially difficult in these times as travel is difficult, meeting together to even uh, allow people to grieve is, is challenging, Lord. Would you just be with that family as they process the, uh, those elements of, of that and just uh, give them a peace that only you can bring. And Lord, uh, we, we come together today desiring peace and we know that uh, the peace that you give us comes from your Holy Spirit. And how fitting that we are able to come back together on this day where we celebrate uh, the giving and the gifting of the Holy Spirit to believers. And we are in certainly desperate need of more of your Spirit poured out your people, and that your people would be open to the Spirit, uh, open to uh, repentance, and turning away from uh, sins, and seeking you out. So we pray that for our congregation, those here today, those watching at home. Lord, we pray it for our cities, for our towns, for our, our county, for our state out to our, our nation and even to the world. Lord, we pray that your spirit would just fill this world from all four corners. That you would help us to come back to you. In Jesus' name. Our hymn this morning is My Savior's Love. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene. Isn't it a wonderful love? I stand amazed in the presence.
This actually feels weird. I've been sitting down for so many weeks now preaching, it feels weird to stand up and preach. It's a good kind of weird, though. It feels like there's some light at the end of the tunnel and some promise that things are going to return to what we know. We're taking a break this week from our sermon series of Greatest Stories Retold. That's what we've been doing. If you haven't been with us online, you may not know that, but that's okay. Um, this is crooked. Sorry. If the table and the temple that are not lined up right, it bothers me. So, and we can shut this off too. Oh, okay. Yeah. There's no sermon. Sorry, I didn't tell you that ahead of time. But we're going to take a break from that, and this is just kind of a, a one-shot standalone. We'll get back to the greatest stories next week. Um, but I just felt for our first time together and online in that hybrid thing that we're doing right now, um, I thought I'd do something a little different. And so one thing that had been going through my mind, I decided that I was going to do a little more research and study on it and flesh this out. And so today, the sermon is love one another. I think it's a good reminder. I think it's a good getting back to the basics of what we know and what we believe and what Christ told us to do. You know, love is the foundation of the Christian faith. It is the reason God created us. It is the reason that Christ came to earth and died and rose again. It is the reason that we have new life. It is love. And we're going to talk about loving one another and how to do that, just as a reminder. I don't think there's any problem. I'm just going to say that right off. I don't, this is not, you know, an in your face, you know, you, you need to get back to where you're supposed to be. This is just a reminder that, hey, we need to love each other. And it's been a challenge at, at times. Uh, we've had some rough weeks, and we've just got to acknowledge that and continue to move on. But love one another as God loves you. That's the main thing here. Love one another as God loves you. I'm going to look at four different passages, just real, yeah, one, two, three, four, <coughs> real quick. They're all one another passages. If you look up one another in the Bible, there's a whole bunch of them. Some of them have nothing to do with, with what we're talking about today. But there's some more that deal with, you know, things that we're supposed to do to one another, for one another, with one another. And so I just looked up a few and, and just picked out three with the overall encompassing love one another. And so John 13, 34 is the first one. This is kind of, this is the foundational. This sets the standard here. Jesus saying to his disciples, a new command I give to you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know you are my disciples, if you love one another. That's Jesus laying the standard for us. Love one another. But how do we love one another? Sometimes it's easier to say that and do it. So a couple other things, and I realized after I just about got done writing this that all the other three came from Paul. Paul's writing. First to Colossians, then to the Thessalonians, and then to the Galatians. So in Colossians 3, 7, or 12 to 14, we read, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. So again, we see Paul bringing the love into it. But forgive one another, he says. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 9, we read, For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another, and build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. So his letter to the Thessalonians was encourage one another, he says in there. And then Galatians chapter 5, verse 13 you, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. But do not use your freedom to indulge in the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. 
For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping with this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. And again, he brings it back to love, talking to Galatians. But serve one another in love. You see where we're going this morning? I think I laid it out there. Forgive one another, encourage one another, serve one another. You got the whole sermon there. If you want to check it out now, you can. But I've got some more stuff. <laughs> Forgive in love. When we talk about love, there are oftentimes concepts that are good, but there are some ways that we get distracted or warped in our concept of what love is. In order for our relationship to be whole and healthy, there needs to be forgiveness. And sometimes we look at love and we don't quite understand what love is. We all have people in our lives that have hurt us. We all have times when we've hurt other people. We are human, and we don't always do things the way we should. And so there are hurts there, and whether it is done in ignorance or whether it is malicious intent, it really doesn't matter because God says forgive one another. Especially within the body. Forgive one another. Paul's letter to the Colossians says, forgive as God forgave you. Now that's a high standard right there. Forgive as God forgave you. When you think back how you were before you came to follow Jesus Christ, when you think about back to the sins that you committed and were forgiven of, when you think back to the mistakes you have made since and have repented and been forgiven of, that is a massive, massive forgiveness that God gives us. It is complete. It is whole. God holds nothing against us. We have a clean slate. We start over. Justification, they say, is just as if we have never sinned. God holds nothing against us. That's how he forgives us. And God expects us to treat others with that same forgiveness, that same mercy and grace. To forgive completely and willingly. That we don't hold it against the person. That we don't keep it there and, and keep that grudge. But that we give them a clean slate and leave the rest behind. Do you remember in Matthew 18 when Jesus told the parable of the unmerciful, unmerciful servant? He told about a servant that owed his master a ton of money. We don't really know how much it was. But I mean, think about if you owed your boss a million dollars. How are you going to pay that back? You can work for the rest of your life and never pay that back, right? And the master was going to throw him and his family in jail and probably sell them and try to get some of his money back. And, and the servant begged and pleaded and said, no, I will pay it back. Just let me have some more time. And, and the master finally had compassion on him and forgave him. And that servant then went out should have been the best day of his life, really, in some ways. But he went out and he found somebody else that owed him a couple bucks. <clears throat> and he threw him in prison. And when the master found out, he was furious. And then he did punish that servant. Because he says, you who were forgiven so much should have been able to forgive that little bit. And when we think about how much we did towards God. And that he forgives us when we come to him. We should be able to forgive the little bit around us. When we withhold forgiveness, we usually end up hurting ourselves more than we do anybody else. When we withhold forgiveness, we, we are confining ourselves to that moment in time, to that, to that attitude, to that emotion. Forgiveness brings healing. It's freeing. It frees us and others from guilt. It heals relationships. It allows everyone to move forward and to grow. So forgive one another as God forgave you. It's part of loving one another as God loves you. The second thing is encourage and love. Encourage and love. As we look at loving each other, encouragement is a big part of that. Where forgiveness begins the healing process and kind of lays some of that foundation for a relationship to build, be built stronger and better, I think that encouragement takes it the next step, builds up on that. Yeah, 
maybe even we could say it's, it's the blueprint for what we want to happen. Encouragement is. It's the plan. I find that construction is most fascinating, honestly. I like watching buildings go up. I like watching how things are put together. I like watching how people build things. I'll, I'll watch videos from time to time of, of uh, a build project. Somebody does a, a shed, a house, a, even just a little thing, you know, a little knick-knack or box. Or, I really like those boxes that have the secret compartments. <laughs> Eventually, I want to I be able to make something like that and make it look good so you can't find the secret compartment. Right now, if I did it, you'd probably go, oh, yeah, that's the secret compartment. Yeah. <laughs> where that's all crooked and all skewed. Yeah. But I like watching how people build things because there's a lot of planning behind it. There's a lot of thinking behind it. Um, right now, one of our summer projects in our family, I think I got them into this. I don't know, the kids have been helping me so far. I had take out there one day too, I think. And, uh, but we filled the dumpster with an old shed. That old shed had to come down. And so now I'm thinking and planning what a new shed is going to look like. Mm. If I get permission, I'm going to build it. It's all in my head. Well, some of it's on paper. <laughs> but we got to have a plan, and I think encouragement is kind of that plan. As we go around, we see potential. As we go around, we see what people are doing, and we encourage them. As we go around, we get encouraged, and, and we want to do more. And, and it lends to that creativity and that thought process and that, that just, let's do something. Encouragement is a plan. What do people need? We're looking around to see how we can encourage people. What, what do I do to help people? We're looking around for ways that I can be useful or ways that I can help somebody or ways that I can do something. What does a person need right now that I can do? Those kind of questions build a plan of encouragement in our minds. To encourage one another, you need to know one another. You need to know likes and dislikes. You need to know... Where people are struggling, you need to know where people are doing well. You know, sometimes when people ask me, you know, I've really got this problem, do you know anybody who can help me with this? That's where I need to know other people to say, oh yeah, so-and-so can help me with that. It, it makes it a lot easier than saying, hmm, I don't know, guess you got to struggle through that. That's not, a, that's not an encouragement. No, encouragement is, is bringing the body together to say, when we have a weakness over here, we have a strength over here, we bring them together. That's encouraging. So you need to spend time talking and working and studying and, and looking at scripture and, and doing life together. And I know that's been hard during the quarantine. We get it. We know. But we found some great ways, I think, of doing encouragement even in the midst of that. I hear stories all the time about people that have made phone calls or made a drive-by visit. Or, you know, we had, we had a drive-by birthday party. Are you going on? <laughs> yeah, some of us didn't get the idea of what drive-by means. Um, didn't drive by. You know, drive-by, park, get out, talk, you know, that's where parents are. <laughs> we weren't the only ones, I know that. But, um, but no, I mean, people did video meetings, video calls. I, I know some instances where little gifts were dropped off, or baked goods, or... Food has been exchanged back and forth between people. Well, I got something I don't need it, but, but you got something I need, and, and it, food just seems to go back and forth. We've got things show up in our house. I don't know where they came from. But things like that are encouraging during this time. And so even in a time of separation and isolation, we can find ways to encourage each other. We just maybe have to be a little more creative, creative about it. But encourage one another. It's, it's the way we love one another as God loves us. And then finally, we think about encouraging, we think about forgiving. It should also move us into the natural aspect of serving one another. To serve in love, I think, is one of the greatest things that God calls us to do. If encouragement is the plan, and forgiveness is the foundation, then service is the structure. It's what people see. It's the action behind it. It's the, it's the practical side of it. How many of you actually think about the foundation of your house on a regular basis? Probably not many of you. I mean, we don't go around too often and check it unless there's a problem. There's water pouring in, or I know <coughs> as a kid, we replaced the corner of one house. It was a cinder block foundation, and you could just about rip the cinder blocks out with your hands. That was how soft it was. We replaced that whole corner. 
that was a problem. That side of the house was kind of starting to sink. But most of the time, if the foundation's there and it's solid and it's strong, we don't think about it. We live in the rest of the house. We don't live in the foundation as such. We live in the rest of the house. That's where we have the living room and the bedroom and the kitchen and, and uh, the other rooms of the house. So if forgiveness and encouragement kind of lays that foundation, service is how we really live life. God calls us to be servants, humbly putting others before ourselves. Serving is also encouraging. How many times have you served somebody and been encouraged by it as well? I'm not sure how that works. When you take the time and effort to help somebody else, it makes you feel good. Somehow God wired us like that, and I don't know exactly what it is. But serving is good. It's good for the soul. And I've been encouraged to hear about the way that you have served through even through this time. Because I hear things all the time. Sometimes it's within your family, sometimes it's within the community, but there are people all around us that are serving. There are people that we are calling essential workers now that have been serving this whole time, taking more of a risk. But you know what? Most of them are happy to do it. I haven't heard too many that have said, I don't want to do my job. Because the ones that didn't want to do their job, they stopped doing their job. And the ones that were supposedly not essential, they were forced not to do their job. And maybe they wanted to do their job. And I guarantee there's somebody out there that said, I was forced to stop doing my job, and it probably is more essential than people realize. But you know, even in the midst of all that, we find ways to serve. We find things to do. And God calls us to serve one another in love. Because he does that for us. Christ was a servant. He came as a servant leader, a servant king. I mean, what kind of contradiction is that? At the Last Supper, he took off his robe and put on a towel, and he washed the disciples' dirty feet. And he said, I'm your master, and I've done this. Now you go out and wash other people's feet. You go out and serve other people. You go out and get dirty. Because that's what I've called you to do. It's love. Love isn't always a nice little box. It's not always clean and pretty. It's not always what we expect it to be. You know, sometimes we think of it as a good feeling, the warm fuzzies, uh, the accepting of everything and everyone and everything they do. And love is not always like that. Sometimes it is tough. Sometimes it holds us to a level of accountability. Sometimes it is setting boundaries and rules to protect us. Sometimes love is doing or hearing something we don't always like. But something that's true that will make us better. But love is always, always, always backed up by action. And it is always, always motivated by grace. God's love compelled him to bring salvation to the human race. God's love compelled him to travel from heaven, the perfect place, to earth that was broken. His love caused him to tell people to stop sinning and to follow him. His love gave forgiveness and encouragement and service all is a part of teaching and being an example. And now he calls us to do the same. As we serve, as we encourage, as we forgive, we grow. We grow in our knowledge of God. We grow in our relationships with others. We grow in our obedience and our strength. God has called us to continue to love one another. And so I just encourage you, find ways to love one another this week. Continue doing what you, as in fact, as Paul says, you already are doing. Continue to grow in love.
Let's bow our heads. Father, thank you for this reminder this morning that you are love and that you call us to love as you love us. Help us to be an encouragement. Help us to offer forgiveness. Help us to serve others. And Father, help us to grow as we do that. That we would know more of who you are, to know your heart, to know how much you really do love us because I think we've only scratched the surface in some ways. So Father, as we go from here, Fill us with your love. Fill us with your spirit and your power. In your name we pray. Amen. Just a couple of reminders as we close. Don't forget to comment down below and, and tell us that you're there. And uh, offerings, offering plates in the back if you haven't fastened your offering already. And we will be back here, Lord willing, next Sunday. Same format. God bless.